Hi guys, uh, today's video is on uh, stress distribution and deflection simulation. Now, if you have been watching my previous videos, uh, I have explained uh, what are the forces experienced by a ship, uh, the, the torsion of the hull and the local stresses experienced by the vessel as well as how our ship's plates stiffened to counteract for these forces. Now, you can find the links to the previous videos in the description section below. So make sure that you watch all the videos on ship construction um so that to get a good knowledge of this topic now when a ship is actually moving through the water many forces act on it how they act is uh, largely determined by the purpose the ship was built for uh, forces on a tugboat will be different from the forces acting on a say a container or a bulk carrier ship now the types of forces that occur in waves are the same for every ship but the magnitudes and points of action depend on the shape of the ship below and immediately above the water line so the pattern of forces on a ship is very complicated and it depends on the weight of the ship, uh, the weight and distribution of cargo, fuel, ballast, provisions, the hydrostatic pressure on the hull applied by the water around it, the hydrodynamic forces resulting from the movement of the ship in the waves, vibrations caused by propellers, pitching, engines, um, and incidental forces caused by when the vessel goes into dry docking or experiences collision or grounding, as well as ice accretion on vessels. Now, of course, uh, the a ship goes through stresses and strains so we have the shearing forces we have the um, shearing forces are those forces because when a ship is in calm water the total upward force equals the total weight of the ship and the uh, shearing force is a force that wants to shift the plane from one part of the ship to another so it's the transverse plane we're talking about so i've explained all that in my previous videos we've talked about shearing forces bending movements hogging and sagging uh, in today's video, I want to talk about uh, the stress distribution and deflection simulation. So stresses in and deflections of the ship's hull due to the various forces working on the ship when encountering heavy waves can be actually simulated on a computer and can be made visible in the computer models. So today I'm going to show you the stress distribution in colors and exaggerated the consequential deflection that occurs due to the stress as experienced by the vessel. Now using this technique uh, with the various speeds and wave patterns and the directions uh, in relation to the ship simulated in a computer, it provides tools to ship managers who in turn provide then instructions to ship masters when to change the ship's course or to slow down the speed of the ship in order to prevent damages. Now these computer simulation outcomes can be translated into clear written instructions and these written instructions can then be passed on to the mariner on the ship to understand uh, how the ship is experiencing stresses and strains and uh, forces and consequential deflection which may weaken the ship's construction. So what you see on your screen here is showing the deformation of a large post Panamax container vessel when in hogging condition. So if you don't know what hogging is, hogging is when the middle part of the ship is bent upwards. So the vertical deflection of a ship's hull in longitudinal direction where the hull midships is bent upwards as a result of cargo distribution or the way the ship is supported by the wave at sea. All right, so you can see here the middle part of the post Panamax container vessel is kind of bent upwards due to which it is experiencing uh, some kind of deformation now the scale of the stress to stress scale is provided right below the diagram as you can see and it starts off from zero which is a large a light, a darker blue color and then it goes starts going lighter and then into the green and then the green goes into yellow and then into orange and then it becomes red and beyond the red is of course the stress scale is of a much higher value so here you can see through colors the computer is able to show uh, how the various parts of the ship and what kind of forces and uh, strain it is uh, or stress it is experiencing in different parts of the ship. So you can see here the red and the orange portion which is showing high stress is now is in the middle portion because that is the portion that is being bent upwards. The rest of the portions of course is also experiencing some kind of stresses but it is not in the higher range scale. Uh, in this figure here, again, it is showing the pressure distribution for a large post Panamax container vessel. Now you can see here, and again, this is uh, in a hogging condition, and you can see here how the 
the, rain, the, the color coding system which is right below the diagram is also again indicating how uh, the different parts of the vessel are experiencing stress and uh, stress but this is more from the bottom view so the previous diagram was from the top view but this is more from the bottom view so you can see in the bottom portion of the vessel especially when they where the vessel is being hogged where it is being bent upwards it is experiencing stress at a very high value uh, which can result to deformation and if this deformation can often also result in sometimes vessels breaking or uh, the ship's hull getting cracked which is uh, very unsafe for the vessel to be proceeding into sea especially when carrying cargo and lives on board. Uh, this figure here shows the deformation and the stresses in the bottom plating again under the hogging condition. And you can see again here the color coding scheme is showing the stress scale uh, at various parts of the vessel. So you can see the computer can actually generate models in different sea conditions and different loading conditions and uh, indicate the stress and strain patterns as experienced by the vessel. And these are the these are the reports that are not only generated in pictorial forms, but uh, this can be translated into instructions or uh, instructions that can then be passed on to the master to adjust their ship's course uh, speed with respect to sea conditions. And also maybe sometimes if a, a vessel can go and adjust the cargo condition in the next port, if possible, then they may require to shift some cargo in certain cases, but of course that is uh, uh, a bit commercial because it costs money to shift cargo but then the chief officer and the master can plan the cargo in such a way to reduce stresses and strains in the portions of the vessel where it is showing more stresses and strains. So here you can see this figure is showing the torsional deflection of the same container vessel that we talked about before together with the stresses. Now if you don't know what a torsion is, torsion is uh, imagine the twisting of a vessel. So you can see it's like of a twisting movement. Now this happens when uh, let's say a cargo has been kept in the forward part on the port side and then another cargo has been kept in the aft part on the starboard side. Now these are heavy cargoes and this can lead to a torsional movement, a twisting of the vessel. Or right? just imagine twisting a, a cloth to wring out water, a wet cloth if you're trying to wring out the water. That is the kind of force as the vessel also experiences. Now you can see here in the detailed view into the forward cargo hold uh, is of a special interest because the torsional loads, they are causing a considerably high stress level in way of partial stranger decks at the positions of changing width. So you can see the forward part of the vessel has then been highlighted and shown to you because uh, this is where the, the stranger decks at the position of changing widths are experiencing the uh, high stress and you can see those are the parts which are colored in uh, orange and red color. Uh, then now this is showing a finite uh, element model of a multi-purpose vessel with heavy lift cranes installed at the port side and the deflections are caused by the oblique sea. All right, so how the sea is interacting with the vessel in motion is causing the deflections as well. This is uh, the view from side for the left described load case. So the case that we described previously where this is again also a multi-purpose vessel with uh, heavy lift cranes installed at the port side. And again, you can see here how the uh, forces are acting on the vessel due to deflections caused by the sea. Here is showing uh, same, the same multipurpose vessel and the deflections are now in sagging conditions. Uh, there is no stress distribution here, but the different colors are representing the plate thickness. So you, can, you know, if you don't know what sagging is, sagging is when uh, the vertical deflection of a ship's hull in again in longitudinal direction, but this time where the hull midships is bent downward. And this could again be due to uh, a result of cargo distribution or the way the ship is being supported at sea or how the sea the forces of the sea are interacting with the vessel in motion. Here it is showing the torsional deflection of the same vessel and this uh, is being shown in a heeled condition to starboard if the vessel is heeling to starboard in this case. Uh, what kind of torsional deflection because you see the cranes are situated or they have been installed on the port side and here the vessel is listing on the starboard side so you can see that there's a torsional deflection in heeled condition 
uh, especially when the hail is to starboard here and the crane columns are bending inwards. Here the view is uh, from side for the left uh, for the left and again uh, it's the same the vessel is uh, being shown and the, the cargo there is a multi-purpose vessel the cranes are on the port side and the ship is listing to starboard and how the uh, stresses or the torsional uh, deflection is acting on the ship from the left view uh, this is a, a torsional deflection again in heel condition but this time the heel is on the port side and the crane columns are again bending inwards and this is the left uh, view of it if you want the side view then you can see here uh, this time the port the vessel is healing to the port side uh, and the cranes are also installed on the port side uh, although the crane columns are bending inwards so you can see again here how the torsional forces are acting on the vessel so i thought i'll show you these uh, figures and how the computer simulation generates these figures because in my previous videos i have talked about the torsion of the hull and the local stresses such as panting stresses pounding stresses diagonal loads vibration stresses and dry docking loads and uh, this is a way for the shore people to actually generate uh, pictorial forms of showing how the vessel experiences stresses and strains and uh, forces which may lead to deformation of a structure and this information is then passed on to the ship's master for them to take action uh, whether it is at sea or whether it is in port whether they have to adjust the cargo condition at port uh, or whether they have to adjust the ship's course and speed at sea thanks guys